Hey guys and welcome back to the second part of this series. In this part we're going to learn about continuous integration and continuous deployment. So in the first part of this series we learned about version controlling systems like Git, GitHub and GitLab. Now we want to dive into CI, CD which is a little bit more advanced than typical Git. So let's go to the terminal and just ask Clio what actually CI, CI, CI CD is. What is actually CI slash CD? So CI CD stands for continuous, as like I have said multiple times already. And this is a set of practices and tools used in software development to automate and streamline the process of integrating code changes, testing and deployment. That sounds like a good thing to know more about as a dev op. So CI automate integration for example run tests and similar automate builds for example for javascript projects it's good and then i guess that cd is more about the part of when this is done we can automatically deploy stuff yeah it automatically deployed to production yeah great Okay, it's a fundamental practice in modern DevOps and Agile methodologies enable them to deliver high quality software more efficiently and with a greater confidence. Okay, so this sounds like something we should know more about. So that was a good explanation or short sentences of what we're actually going to learn more about in this part. So even though this doesn't make me an expert, it makes me more confident to proceed to the next part. Diving in. Since Clear doesn't have the best memory, I just need to remind her that I've already learned about the VCS. So, um, I have already learned about VCS in the first part of this series. Um, can you teach me a little bit about CI slash CD? Preferably with uh, uh, hands-on project. Okay, so nice. Here you can see a long list of things to do. This is then CI, I would guess, and then we will try to CD this into AWS later in this part. So let's begin with step one, creating a new project. So we go into this, my CI CD project, very good name. Create a simple Python script. Okay, let's just copy one and one line here. VI app.py. Indent this correctly. Return A plus B. And then we need to do this to see if it's run from the command line or what. Print. So this just is a simple function that uh, multiplies, not multiplies, but add, add, attracts. Oh, what's the English word? Set this together. For example, 3 plus 5 should be 8. Okay, so we can save this and quit. So we have the app now we are going to deploy. But we also need a test file for this. Okay, um, test.py, vi, and then we need this code here from app import add. So we import the add function we just created. Forgot the semicolon. And then here is three tests. And assert minus one plus one is zero. Assert add zero zero should also be zero. Okay, so now we have the test in order. Then we just need to set up a virtual environment and install PyTest. And okay, let's do that. Let's just copy these commands. I guess she knows best. 
activate this and run sorry install pytest and then we run pytest great this was 100 percent okay perfect so then we need to commit this to git like we learned in part one create a git ignore file because we don't want to pass in the virtual environment okay let's do that before we continue vi git ignore and what we want to ignore is vnv slash at the end there and we also want to ignore the python cache folder okay let's go to github and create a new repository there create one new repository we can call this the same as this folder that's easy it is available that's a shock um, and then we can just copy this git init it actually also said here to do um, we need to add all of the files not just one of them git status Okay, so we want to add all of these three files and notice that since we had the git ignore we are not including this and this perfect git commit like that okay um, create a new repository and then it's these three here left to do If I refresh here now, I should see these three files. Perfect. Um, then we can go back here, create a new GitHub action workflow. So inside the project directory, create a new directory called this here, mkdir.github slash workflows. mkdir.github. Is that actually a folder? Yes, workflows, and then in there we are going to create a file called CICD YML vi.github slash workflows CICD. And I think I actually will open this in a editor so that I can manage the spacing and stuff a little bit better because I'm not the best at Vim. Okay, so. Then I have the project here, here I have the .github uh, workflows and there's the CI CD and then I can just paste in what I copied from here. If I then copy everything and fix the indentation um, and just save this. So what happens here? Um, okay, I just want, I want to ask what this actually does, but before that I just want to do these things here so that uh, they are committed to git and when this is done i can just git push so now that the workflow should be online um can you explain the contents of the cicd.yml nice so this is more good information because i did not understand everything there Certainly. So the name is just the name of the workflow. It helps you identify one workflow on GitHub Action. Okay. The on in this case we run whenever we push something to or we do a pull request. We have not learned about this, but at least we know what push does. A section that defines the jobs that will be run. So each job can have multiple steps. Okay. This is the name of the job. So the job is build, that's the name. Okay, runs on. This is runs on a virtual machine, Ubuntu latest, okay. Um, this section defines individual steps that make up the job. Human readable name, so this could be whatever we want. And here it looks that we are using something called setup Python and we want to use Python version 3.x, okay. We set up the dependencies so we create a new just like we did locally activate it install pytest okay 
and after that we run the tests run so then we activate it run pytest specifies a shell command okay okay so that should be it let's go here now i think this action sh should be somewhere under here add the c line so this was done if i go in here it was run some warnings down here we can just ignore this hopefully but the build was okay perfect okay so now that i know the basics of setting up a pipeline that runs a python test on my code i think we can safely proceed to the next part which will be cd so we want to make it possible to deploy this to aws so first I just want to log into my AWS account and make sure that I have the keys because I'm going to need uh, two keys from there. Okay, so I have signed in to my console and then I found the access keys. So I do not think that I can view the other code here so I need to create a new one. Maybe I need to delete one first. Deactivate. Yeah, so now I can create a new one. Okay. And I'm going to need to do this for application that are running outside AWS or the CLI. Hmm. Okay, let's just take this one. Um or maybe I should ask Cleo what sort of access key from AWS do you need should I select CLI or other remember that this should be integrated with github because I think maybe she could use this one but this one is maybe better for github or maybe this one um generate you have to an option to generate key id okay yes yeah, she doesn't actually explain here either which one i need but i need to create the aim i i am user and i need to do it for that specific user okay let's begin by creating a new user um, so I can just cancel this um, account where do I find users users there um, then create new user Clio testing provide user access to that one custom password maybe that's good enough no there that was accepted okay so um attach to a group are there any policies i can use permissions deploying no um beanstalk aws create a new im user programmatic access attach the necessary policies so deploying to there let's search here again deploy no elastic beans let's just take everything with elastic beans next create user okay but hopefully the rest was added and was everything we needed okay so for this user we need to create a new access key create access key let's just select other here leo testing i think that's a very suitable name and then okay so let's go back again generate access keys store them in git repository okay so in here i think i can go to settings 
secrets and variables actions manage variables repository secret AWS secret access key AWS access key that's this one and one more secret which is the other one oops created the access key wasn't that the one I just selected no, key ID key ID just want to do just so I know it's correct okay so hopefully everything there is okay now so then in your github action flow you can access the secrets there here's an example of how this could look like okay um I can just make a copy of this so that I have it um what should I create on AWS to host the Python script we created I think this should be a elastic beans container or similar elastic beans talk um, ideal for this one create package set up triggers maybe we just use lambda but I set up for this one yeah, let's try to use the AWS elastic beans we can use EB okay create this one yes or we can just use this command git status git add git commit added requirements oops git push and go back here now and then install the elastic beans cli um, I think we might have that already let's copy this eb in it now i do not have elastic beans installed um do i need i think she's wrong here now do i need the eb shouldn't everything go directly from github you are right yes i was okay so then just wait for it to finish we have done all of this let's see if I have this one for that user so it doesn't crash clear testing no add permission add permission attach policy directly that's not full access no. uh, administrator yeah let's take this one hopefully that's enough you select exit the account hmm which one do I hopefully not need um, let's remove this one I'm really not sure what I do here but no that does not work okay let's try to continue just see if this works so we have the workflow we need to set up this now okay so we need to create the elastic bean application um okay so let's go here now beans applications and I am at the US East let's go to US West too because that's what I saw here create application Clio testing don't need a description for this and I need an environment okay web server hopefully that's correct hopefully this is correct manage ds the platform should be python 3.12 or 2 we can upload the code version 10 local file let's just upload the app.py file and see if that's good enough 
single instance free tier eligible um, which one can this be maybe this one this one I'm not sure maybe let's go to the next and see okay so I got a warning I couldn't use that one maybe this is correct okay so then I was sent to the next one this should probably just be X'd out skip to review and submit so let's see if we can start this now okay so that stopped and I'm not sure what's wrong let's try to copy this warning and just paste it in here before we yeah we can just paste it in so ALA is no longer allow integration in your account Instead, you should lose, use a launch template. Okay, so I am there now. Go to EC2 service. EC2 service. That is probably this one. Um, in the left hand, see launch templates. That's okay, it's this one. Launch templates. Um, create launch template create launch template fill in the necessary such as AMI ID instance type key pair okay let's try to do that um, Clio testing Clio testing okay provide guidance I can set up a template I can use it auto scaling there yes source template you can optionally okay we will skip that use ubuntu it's probably the easiest one to just go for instance type there we use this since this is free tier enabled are there any key pair maybe we should create a new key pair no skip that one Hopefully we do not need it. Create launch template. Let's see if this can work now. View launch templates. Um, and then if you're using Elastic Bean, go to the environment. Okay, so then the next step will be to move this here into this one. Like that and that should actually be everything we need to do in order to test the elastic bean cd so let's go back into here git status git add git commit testing cd git push and when that is done we can just wait a few minutes and everything should be okay So that was that for this video. We have now dived into CI CD. So I went through a wizard just to make sure that everything was working. I saw a lot of checkboxes, select list, and similar for creating the environment on AWS. My CD stopped a couple of times, but first I found that I had a type on the name. Second time it was because the environment hadn't been started correctly on AWS. So I just read the configuration a couple of times and then I finally made it work. So now we have learned a lot about the basics when it comes to CI CD. I know a little bit more where the setting goes, where the monitor, how to monitor the process, etc. But I still want to learn more. So maybe we should ask Clio just a little bit information on what more we can read about when it comes to this subject. Can you recommend me? A couple of videos I can watch to learn more about CI CD. So here we can see it. We got some tutorials at Lesson, CI CD, GitLab, CID, CD Basics, Jenkins, CI CD Pipeline Tutorial. Great. So I have a little bit of information about what we can learn about in these videos and then links to these perfect 
So now I have more I can dive into. These reading materials and videos can help me a lot on the way to becoming a DevOps. In the next part of the series we will start working with containerization, docker and similar. So that's going to be very interesting. See you in the next video.